Well, that didn't go as planned. What is going on, guys? There are actually crickets in my garage making a bunch of noise, so I can't even do my intro to this video. So I just got done watching the Deadpool and Wolverine, and I wanted to make some claws. So instead of making a multi-claw, I thought it would be a good idea to make a single claw before I go to making a multi-claw. So it seems pretty easy to make, and I shouldn't have had a problem. And it worked, but there is a slight problem with it. And I'll show you that in the end of the video, but for now, I'm gonna show you how I made this, guys. So it all started with a piece of construction paper and a little doodling on my part. I'm not the best at drawing, but I think I did a pretty good job. I think it goes without saying, I need to cut it out of the paper. So once cut out, we have this nice drawing that we need to now glue to polystyrene foam. This is half inch thick insulation foam. I'm going to use Elmer's craft glue to glue the piece of paper to the foam. It gives just enough time for me to tack it up and apply it to the foam to allow me to cut it out in five to 10 minutes. I really don't need the glue to permanently keep it there because I'm going to be removing the paper after I'm finished cutting it out. And to cut the pattern out of the foam, I'm using a hot wire cutter that I made myself. Now that the pattern is cut out, it's now time to remove the piece of paper that I temporarily glued to it. So I mocked up this little contraption to the hot wire cutter to allow me to cut an angle, or at least a blade edge onto the foam. I do understand that if I used a larger circle, it would have given me a more uniform edge onto the foam. Then I used some sandpaper to clean it up a little bit further. Next, I cut out two little pieces with my hot wire cutter. I then glued one to each side. This will allow it to fit into my hands very firmly. Afterwards, I realized it looked pretty plain, so I decided to make some straight lines using a round file that I used some electrical tape to make a uniform fit for both sides. And now I have to glue on a sprue. This is going to be where the molten metal is going to flow into the pattern. It's now the following day and the glue is now dry. It is now time for us to do what they call the lost foam casting process. So just note that normally when I do this type of casting, I coat my foam with drywall mud. I didn't want to do it with this one because I didn't think I needed to. So with this process, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is fill the container with dry sand, vibrating it as you fill it. Now for this pattern, I put the pattern on a slight angle, thinking I would have to do that to get the molten metal to flow all the way down to the tip. And to be quite honest with you, I think I might have vibrated it too much and possibly distorted the pattern but I'm not really sure, and you'll see that later. So once you're filling the pattern, make sure you leave a little bit of the foam showing and place a little cup on the top. This is where you're going to pour the molten metal into. And now it's time to melt some aluminum. I'm going to start off the melt by using some cutoffs from a previous aluminum casting that I did a few weeks back. This is where I made four little Zelda Triforce coins. If you like Zelda and want to check that video out, definitely check the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and melt some metal.
now that I think I have enough metal to cast, I am going to now remove the slag from the top of the crucible. I always do this before pouring. Wow, I sure did fill that one to the very top, didn't I? I'm just going to scrape away some of the residue left over, probably from the burning of the foam. So I had another piece of foam here in the garage that I wanted to turn into metal. So I melted down a little bit more aluminum, waiting for this one to solidify. And I figured, why not do another cast? So normally I either pull out the cast from the sand or I dump out the container. But in this case, I decided to just dig out the sand with my little scooper. So at first glance, I was super happy because the cast came out. But then I started noticing a couple features that I wasn't really that happy about. And now I'm going to remove the other casting I did, another Zelda coin. I had one left over that I didn't cast a few weeks back. And I also did not coat this with drywall mud. And you can really tell because the finish is horrible. So everything has cooled down. It is now a few hours later and it's now time to cut off the extra aluminum and to start really cleaning these up. Alright guys, after cutting off the sprue and wire brushing off of the black from it, I am not happy with this cast at all. As I said in the beginning, I kind of feel like it got deformed. Because looking at it, it starts to get really fat right around the center. And once you get past the center, it gets back to normal half inch. And I have it the way it was in the sand. The bottom is straight as can be, but the top seems to have that bubble. But realistically, it could not have gotten deformed because it got bigger. If it was deformed, there would be a concaved area in the bottom where the center was higher. So I don't understand what happened. So now I'm going to clean it up using my new Viver. MM4113 combination belt and disc sander. If you guys are interested in one, head into the description and check out my affiliate link with a coupon code for 5% off.
All right, after filing and sanding, this is what we have for today. I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time really giving this a good shine because again, I wasn't really all that happy with the turnout. So if you guys have any idea why that happened, definitely leave a comment below and let me know what you think. What the heck happened with this cast? And do you still like it? That's the question. As always guys, if you like this type of video, head over to my video section and check some of them out. I have a bunch of videos that I'm sure you will enjoy.